Hello and welcome to another episode of Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. I'm your host, Lee Zen. Today we're going to talk about running ECS Fargate tasks and just how easy it is actually to run a Fargate task uh, by really not having to create an image at all and, and writing some code. Um, so what are we going to cover today? We're going to cover creating a Fargate task definition from a function, uh, like right in our Pulumi program. Uh, so we're going to write just JavaScript code that's going to let us uh, run as a, as, a, as a Fargate task. And then we're going to do two things. We're going to execute that task on a schedule, and we're also going to execute that task on S3 object creation. So the idea here is to kind of give you two flavors of how we could execute. You could imagine, you know, setting up some kind of task, um, and then having that task get executed for you know a couple a couple reasons. So let's get started. I already have a, an example built, uh, pre-built, and then we're going to kind of continue from here. So you can see I, I am using uh, Pulumi Alias X in TypeScript today. Uh, and so we have a VPC that we've already created along with a, a cluster. This is an ECS cluster that uh, uses that VPC. And then we create a Fargate task definition. It's a very simple definition. All we're doing here is we're basically saying, um, you know, just generate some random value uh, for whatever reason and just log this, log this to the console. And this will actually end up in CloudWatch logs with the way this is constructed. So. Um, by default, basically, this, this container will log to a log group that's attached to this container when we're using AWS X. So I'll show you that in a second. And then I, I create a callback uh, to execute this task. And so uh, this callback just uh, takes that task. So this is the task we defined above here. Uh, and it, it runs the task. Uh, this, is a, this is my Lambda that's going to run. And so this is a Lambda function that's going to get executed, and it's going to run that task uh, on that cluster with a count of three. So, um, and then the Lambda itself will have its own logging that's going to say, hey, it's running the task, and then, or the set of tasks, really, and then uh, it's going to log the output. And then we'll schedule it so that every minute uh, we do this. So I, I already, I already uh, ran this um, uh, uh, pulling program, so all the infrastructure is already created. And we can actually see... Um, in my console uh, here, we can actually see the various uh, resources that's already created. So we have the VPC along with uh, the, the task, the, the, the event, and everything else. So let's take a quick look at the task. Um, and we can also take a quick look at the function. So first, let's look at the function. So this is the task callback. Um, and so that's what was defined here, the task callback. And uh, the task callback, uses actually, I'll, I'll probably make a note, it has two policies attached to it for the role. So one is the Lambda basic execution role, which lets us uh, execute and also log to CloudWatch. Uh, and then this also, we have this EC2 container service access uh, policy so that it can execute the, the uh, actual uh, uh, Fargate task. So if we look at the monitoring for this and we look at the logs in CloudWatch, uh, we should see uh, this logging. We should say we should see running task and then done, uh, and we should see that you know uh, once a minute. And so yep, we see that you know running task done, running task done. So this is happening uh, every minute per hour uh, schedule uh, that we defined here. And if we now go and look at the log group for the task itself, and you can see that's defined here for the counter task. Um, so that this was automatically created for me as part of uh, defining this this particular container, uh, this particular task definition. So I click that, oh, that popped this open. And so this is my counter task. If we look at kind of, you can see these are some recent runs of this task. And you see, you know, every minute I'm getting three of these. So here's one, two, three, here's another one, two, three, here's another one, two, three. And if we open up these logs, we should expect to see uh, exactly uh, what uh, the task does, which is just to log a, a random value. So you could totally imagine you know, adopting a pattern like this for something like a batch job or some kind of scheduled batch job where, you know, every hour, every minute, every day, you have to fire off some set of container tasks. You could totally set something like this up where, you know, you write all your code right in here, you know, do whatever processing you're doing, um, and then, you know, simply have a Lambda that, that gets executed every, you know, on, on the minute, on the hour, or whatever it is, and then have all those containers fire in and just go off. Um, and you can, you know, set it up so that you have three containers, you have five containers, whatever, however many you need. Um, and so that's kind of one, one pattern. Uh, the other pattern would be like we talked about earlier, um, you know, having some way to uh, 
run the tasks on some event. And so, you know, it, technically this, this schedule run is already an event, but I just wanted to quickly show how easy it is to actually wire this up to some other type of, uh, of event as well. So let's create a, an S3 bucket. Uh, so we're gonna set up an event where every time we create a new object in an S3 bucket, we'll, we'll fire the, uh, the task as well. So we'll have a, a bucket and uh, that's uh, S3 bucket. And we'll just call this a uh, task bucket. And then we can kind of do something similar to on schedule here. We can just say uh, bucket on object created and we'll say this is a uh, object created. Um, so this is the subscription we're creating and it takes a handler. Um, and so the handler will be uh, this same event handler here, this callback. And so we're gonna have to change the, here you can see the type is, is CloudWatch. So we can, we're gonna change this a little bit because this, this gives us a different type of event. This gives us a, uh, you can see here, it's an S3 bucket event versus here, um, this is an event rule event. So we're gonna accept both types of events. So the bucket event. And we can actually kind of change this up a little bit, right? We can actually change, um, uh, we can, you can imagine like passing different parameters to the task uh, based on what kind of event is running. Or, you know, for now, we'll just, you know, for the sake of demonstration purposes, we'll just log something different here uh, instead of changing what we pass to the task. Um, but you can, you know, you can imagine uh, changing some of the stuff we pass to the, to the, to the task itself. So but we're not going to do that. Like I said, uh, here we're just going to do, we can, we should be able to do this. So if, um, if we, if we cast the, uh, the event as, um, as this declare event type, uh, and if this, you know, has, you know, some specific thing, uh, so in this case, like detail, uh, then we know it, then we, we can log that this is a, uh, event, uh, scheduled event. Uh, otherwise, um, we'll do this as a check here. Uh, we have this. So if it's a bucket event, then we have something else, right? So we can log this. Uh, and you can imagine, um, like I said, using this to help inform, you know, what we pass to the task or, you know, do something different. So, okay, so now let's, now that I think I fixed that correctly, let's uh, run Plumi up. So this will again, update the function and then actually update the, uh, should, that should, that's all it should update actually. And just give that a second. So it initially thinks there are three things to update because it may have to update the ARN uh, for the notification and target, but uh, in reality, um, it's being conservative since it doesn't know uh, how that arm might change. You can see it actually ends up in practice only changing uh, one thing. Okay, so uh, let's uh, do our uh, copy again to something new and we'll call this, you know, foo. All right, so we have a new object now in the bucket. Uh, and so now we can go look at our logs again. Uh, so we'll go back here, come here, and you can see we have the scheduled event. Uh, that's because the event is scheduled and then we should hopefully in a second uh, see our uh, foo event uh, as well. Is that log somewhere else? Oh, here. There we go. So bucket event. Okay, great. So um, we can kind of see those are the two. We have both scheduled events, uh, which is expected since we have this, this schedule thing running uh, over here. And then we also, at the same time, uh, from from oops, uh, from um, running our, our copy. And actually, let's just do that one more time. Oops. So we'll upload to uh, bar this time. And if we go back to the console, uh, and we refresh, so we pop open here. Uh, it should show up. See, so we have the schedule event, and then we have the bucket event that just fired just now. So yeah, that was that was pretty much what I wanted to show you. Um, 
just how easy it is to have Fargate tasks run both on a scheduled event and also on a notification event, and really just how easy it is to write Fargate tasks in line uh, in Pulumi. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe to Pulumi TV for more videos in the future, and we'll see you next week on Modern Infrastructure Wednesday. Thanks very much.